Hi, my name is Grace Helms, a graduate student at Radford University. I will be talking about the impact fine arts have on education and the spillover effects the arts have on communities. So, what are the fine arts or arts? The arts, fine arts, are defined by the Virginia Department of Education as knowledge and skills that students acquire through fine arts instruction, which include the abilities to think critically, solve problems resourcefully, communicate effectively, work collaboratively, understand historical and cultural perspectives, and exercise creative thinking by employing originality, flexibility, and imagination. Arts education are arts lessons or classes offered in pre-kindergarten through 12th grade that are standards-based, taught by certified arts specialists through music, drama, theater, visual arts, and dance. Notice that these classes must be taught by specialists with degrees in the field. Now I will talk a bit about policy. When did the arts become core subjects in national policy? And what does this have to do with a well-rounded education? A well-rounded education is found by defining core subjects in the No Child Left Behind law of 2001. The term core academic subjects mean English, reading or language arts, mathematics, science, foreign languages, civics and government, economics, arts, history, and geography. The Department of Education states that a well-rounded education is a civil right according to Title IV-A of Every Student Succeeds Act under Section 4107, providing equity to all students, including female, minority, ELL, low income, and students with disabilities. So now that we understand what a well-rounded education is, and we see the policies in place that protect the arts, what are some problems? As a visual arts teacher for 14 years, I can tell you that some problems arise when administration and teachers are unaware of these policies. Some members of the school do not realize that the arts are in fact core subjects and protected from pullouts. Support for the arts must trickle down from the top in order to be most effective. The policies are also created to support the professional development for arts instructors, which can also be a challenge. Many professional development opportunities are geared toward other common core areas. Under Every Student Succeeds Act, fine arts teachers must be licensed professional, professionals and professionals need to grow in order to thrive and collaborate. Another issue occurs in regards to arts classes when they are referred to as specials. This causes confusion. Art classes should be referred to as essentials or actually just remove that extra label. Arts classes are part of a well-rounded education of the students and should be considered, should not be considered a break for classroom teachers, but should be valued for the outcomes they encourage, inspire, and develop in students. I know firsthand the benefits of arts classes. Let's take a look at the research provided that show the ways in which schools benefits from art, benefit from arts classes. These benefits not only enrich students and schools, but spill over into communities. The arts help students find their place in the world, highlighting their gifts. How do the arts contribute to student achievement and success? In Dwyer's research from the article, Reinvesting in Arts Education, Winning America's Future Through Creative Schools, Students that have arts classes show increases in 21st century skills, habits of mind, as well as transfer of learning. Dwyer defines habits of mind as skills that include problem solving, critical thinking, and creative thinking to solve issues and communicate clearly with others while learning and growing and working with teammates. Rupert defines transfer of learning as learning in one context, context assists learning in another. I know from my experiences in the classroom that when teachers collaborate, this happens. For example, I work closely with teachers in my schools to correlate arts lessons to literacy, science, and history. I love seeing their faces light up when connections are made and transfers of learning occur. The review of evidence arts education through the 
lens of Every Student Succeeds Act by Juan shows increases in cognitive abilities like creativity and critical thinking, as well as other outcomes like social emotional learning, self-confidence, and self-awareness, which boost attitudes and dis dispositions towards school in general. This leads to better attendance outcomes. Empathy is another outcome from arts education. Multiple studies like the A-plus study from Critical Links, Learning in the Arts, and Student Academic and Social Development show the effects arts classes have on students growing socially. Arts classes are full of collaboration. The study also gives research supporting arts development of self-concept and increased literacy development students that have disabilities. In my classes every year, we do a giving project and the students help come up with projects that we can use to help our community. Some projects have included empty bowls in which we made bowls out of ceramics and gave to the food bank to raise money, cards for veterans, school collaborative wall for autism awareness, and tape murals sending positive messages. Claw and Nutbra found in arts-based education research that literacy is linked to arts experiences and they allow for more meaningful connections in different settings. Research was found in schools and jails. Salas published research in 2002 in which the arts are therapeutic and when inmates are taught a skill, they are less likely to repeat these offenses. Incarcerated youth with arts classes overcome behavioral problems and find skills to use in the workplace. From my experiences in the classroom, students with behavioral issues are grateful to learn new skills and often are extremely imaginative. They use arts classes as an outlet from trauma they have endured. This brings me to my favorite study, Rupert's Critical Evidence, How the Arts Benefit Student Achievement. Rupert explains the ABCs of arts. The arts boost A, B, and C. A stands for academics and math and reading. B stands for basics, including critical thinking, thinking skills, social skills, and motivation. And C is for culture. Arts-rich schools have positive school culture. As for motivation, and engagement, Rupert's research found that the arts increase attendance for at-risk populations and decrease the high school dropout rate. Dwyer suggests that you check out the policies in your locality to make sure the arts instructional requirements are in place to create equity for all learners. I emailed my representative from National Art Education Association and I received an at-a-glance art scan with each state listed highlighting state's art information and policies. Case study from arts education in secondary schools and effects and effectiveness connects economic, cultural, and community relationships to the arts. Parents and community members support the after-school events and attend performances. The studies found that the arts funding is an issue and financial support is sometimes offered by community partners. The arts offer cultural experiences to diverse groups of people through school settings. The empty bowl event my schools participated in impacted the entire county. Students and parents came together and helped create and glaze ceramic bowls. The bowls were sold and all the money was given to the food bank. Thousands of dollars were raised. This event connects partnerships with local businesses, the art center, and artists within our school and outside of our school community. There is one lesson I've learned from the pandemic. It's that arts are important and more important than ever to help kids successfully process their emotions. Social emotional learning is more important than ever. And I just read the superintendent's letter from James Lane, May 2020, and it stated that the newly adopted revised fine art standards of learning increased focus on creativity and innovation of the art, arts and were reviewed in relationship to the instructional practices related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. How fitting for the times that we live in. There's something to be said about the arts in schools. They breathe life into the school culture and offer process. They bring joy when students complete their work and display it in the halls, whether it's a song or a painting or a performance, 
And what I wish for you to do with this, with this information is to inform others that fine arts classes are core classes and protected from pullouts as part of the Every Student Succeeds Act. I hope that you'll support arts teachers and remember that a well-rounded -round education is a civil right. I hope you inform others that arts-rich schools are proven to be more effective and enhance student outcomes both academically and they help the school culture. I hope you remind others that arts classes support social emotional learning and habits of mind and they help bring um, positive um, healthier lifestyles to our students so that they can in turn give back to their communities. The arts help students find their voice um, and I took that from Chloe and Nut Brown in 2019. I also loved what Harlan said, the arts knit and bind schools together because art itself is an outcome. And this last um, bullet that I put on here is about the air shift program that I got to participate in as um, it was I actually signed up for it as some professional development. And I volunteered along with other people in my community to um, combine the arts with businesses and we solved problems in our um, county using design thinking. So check that out. And I just wanna thank you for your time and attention and I hope that you can use this presentation to support and advocate for your students.